Warning, the podcast you're about to hear has a unique conservative perspective and may be politically incorrect, containing some controversy in its message. This episode may speak out against liberalism, socialism, the dark state, and religious organizations. It is possible that evil in politics, education, law, society, and religion will be discussed and exposed. However, we believe this podcast adds truth and value to a mature, disenfranchised audience who may be tired of apostate religions and wicked world systems. Listeners who are easily offended, overly sensitive, or have progressive leanings sympathetic to the topics we expose should be forewarned not to listen any further. We thank both those who choose to listen as well as those who choose not to listen. You've been warned. And now, let us get on with the show. Hello, everybody. It is Paul on Freedom Friday, alternative news and commentary. Today's date is April 2017. Many of you are wondering where Miss Kapow is. She is coming back. She has just been busy doing stuff. And so the show must go on, folks. The show must go on. So you are stuck with me just for, you know, a few a few more things. And then uh, we're going to get back to normal. But I do want to share with you today, non-binary in the Bible, non-binary in the Bible. Say that three times very fast. Last week, I talked about um, these sex robots, right? You know, these uh, these guys who are marrying the robots. And then I talked about the bride of Christ and the wife of God, Israel, in the Old Testament and the bride of Christ in the New Testament the laws of God and how this antichrist spirit intends for all intents and purposes to change the law of God and the times, the Moeds, just like Daniel says. So it's, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. I know that the people who listen to the Kapow radio show, people who listen to brother Marcos, people who listen to this show, Freedom Friday. I understand I'm preaching to the choir. You guys are, are, are already, you know, like out of, you're, you're already off the spiritual grid. You know what I mean? You know, you, you're all over the place. You're all over the globe. You're, uh, or the flat earth, whatever you want to believe you're all over the place. And, um, there's little pockets, you know, you're, you're all alone. You don't have You know, churches or organizations, even your families think you're crazy and you've run out of tinfoil from making all the hats. And um, it's like Brother Marcos has his new uh, vignette, you know, his um, calling all Christians, calling all Christians. Is anybody out there? It's like the apocalypse. You know, the world blows up and there's just this one ham operator, you know, on the radio. And he's, he's, he's going, is anybody out there? And then you hear a little faint voice. I'm over here. You know, what's going on? What's going on over there in Sweden? And um, that's kind of like what it's like, you know. So I know I am preaching to the choir. The choir is right behind me. You're going, yeah, I'm saved. I got it. Uh, The people that need to listen uh, to these messages won't listen to them. They don't hear them. They're not interested in listening to them anyway. Um, It it would seem to be a big waste of our time, only that... um, it just it appears to me that uh, the Lord would have us to continue doing this until, until he tells us not to do it. And that's all. Um, but anyway, given that, I still think the information is important because it stimulates thought. And um, though you probably know all this stuff, you do know it down in your spirit. Maybe you haven't put together the scriptures or really... Uh, come to the place where you know why uh, something is absolutely repulsive to our Lord or something like that. So uh, that's why uh, I'm talking these little talks here. And normally we do Freedom Friday. We talk about news, alternative news, things like that. So um, we are going to mention a news article and then talk about that, a non-binary, a non-binary thing. Uh, And this is pretty interesting. There is an actress there is a, see, I, just, I already messed up. I'm sorry. An actor. See, actress is gender specific. That means a female actor. 
an actor is non-gender. It just means male or female. It's like a player. He's a player in a play. She's a player in a play, right? Not a playeress. So I'm learning here to be politically correct for my Santanic buddies here. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not just picking on, um, you know, LGBTQ XYZ people or whatever. I'm as much as a sinner as they are. I've been saved by grace. Thank God. Uh, but I'm still a sinner. I think the difference is that now I read and learn about the laws of God. And I say to myself, I want to do that. I don't want to disobey the laws of God. I want to be a God follower. And that's the only difference. Uh, whereas these people are in open rebellion against the laws of God. Okay, so there's a reward and punishment for both those actions. All right? So I'm not being mean. I'm just saying it the way it is. Uh, There's this actor. She is a female. Now, I screwed up again because she wants to be called they. So they are a female. They're on the Showtime show called Billions. That's right. Her name, I mean, their name is Asia Kate Dillon. Asia Kate Dillon. And they are on this season's show called Billions from Showtime. And they are stealing scenes as the character of Taylor Mason, a financial wonder kind who is helping the uh, lead star in the show. So here's the deal. The show's uh, producers auditioned um, all kinds of trannies. Oh, I'm sorry. Transgender people. uh, uh, Queers. Fagalots. I'm sorry. (sighs) It's really hard for me to get. I'm very offensive. Um, They auditioned all these trannies and... um, he, she's, he, males, and gender non-binary actors for the role. And they end up casting Dylan after the third audition because they said that they's performance, is that correct? Is that correct? Um, non-binary, LGBT, English? You see, here's my problem. I can't speak English anyway. I, I, I can't talk anyway. So now you're telling me to unlearn the pronouns that I've learned all my life and not say she or he, but they, their, and them. And that's really hard because mentally I'm just, I'm not very bright anyway. So I'm having a hard time. So Dylan's performance impressed everyone on the set. The the cast and the cast and crew just said, man, this, this person, they, are uh, amazing, amazing. And so um, they got hired. Asia Dillon got hired. Okay. So then now, because they are doing such a good job in this show, and I'll explain what they're doing. They are up for an Emmy Award, right? But then when Showtime asked which category that Dillon, they, them, their, wanted to be submitted under male or female, they had to give it some thought. The performer identifies as ooh, ooh, gender non-binary. Gender non-binary. And what I'm going to do in this sh- show here pretty soon is I'm going to uh, show you just a few scriptures, just a few things, and kind of give you the, the outwork of why this is... Um, Luciferian, why this is um, anti-God, anti-Christ, and why it's a breakdown. It's a, uh, it's part of the deception. It is uh, that these minds have been turned over to filth and uh, stupidity to believe the great lie. You're going to see this. Now we, you're the Kapalists, like I said, the Kapalists, you guys know all this stuff. So I'm just putting it out there so you know 
you're not going to get involved in it. You're not going to watch this show. You don't, you're not going to um, get involved in the he, they, they, she. You, you're not going to get in that pronoun thing. Um, you're just going to go, huh, it is what it is. And um, someday uh, the wicked are going to be removed. And then we're going to have an age of righteousness. That's where you're going. That's where you need to go. That's what you need to worry about. You need to take heed. And you still need to take heed, my folks, my friends, my folks, my folky friends, whatever you are. You need to take heed because um, I just heard this week that uh, Bible Answer Man, Hank Hangergraf, went, went sideways and, and joined the Greek Orthodox Church. I couldn't believe it. How could somebody be so um, studied on the word of God and then be deceived in a false religion or any religion? It could happen. You have to take heed, folks. You, you just constantly have to, you have to get out of the system, be spiritually off the grid. That means get, get out of the religious systems because when you're under those umbrellas, you can't think straight. I'm telling you, you are not going to change upwards Change comes up, down. I've been saying this for years. You really have to take heed. Okay, so I digress. So Dylan is up for an Emmy Award. They say, Dylan, what category do you want to be under? Because Dylan identifies as gender non-binary and choosing between supporting actor and supporting actress, well, it sparked a conversation. Right. So here's what uh, here's what they said. Here's what they said. Not they as in many people. They as in her non non gender her they. What I learned. I'm surprised she learned. She uses the word I. She should say what or they should say what they learned through thy research is that the word actor specifically in reference to those who perform in plays came about in the late 1500s as a non-gendered word. It applied to all people, regardless of anatomical sex or gender identity. The word actress came into being to define at anatomically female performers. So they sent in a passion letter to the television academy. Not they, the Showtime producers. They, the non-binary female act, actor. Uh, how am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so they sent, they sent in a passion letter to the television academy questioning the gender-specific classifications of the acting categories. And they said, I wanted to get more information from the academy as to whether or not they, oh, they used the word actor or actress to refer to a sign sex or identity so that I could make the best decision for myself as to how I wanted to be submitted. So when, the, when she says whether or not they use, I wonder, I wonder if they're all non-binary also. Can you use they for regular people that identify as binary things? Hmm. So here's her letter. She says, oh, I'm sorry. They say, I'd like to know if in your eyes, actor and actress denote autonomy or identity. And why is it necessary to note, to do, uh, to denote? See, I can't even speak English folks, let alone, let alone do, uh, the, the uh, pronouns. I, I don't, I'm, I can't even talk. So it, they wants to know if it's necessary to denote whether in the first place, um, actor, actress is, uh, important. The reason I'm hoping to engage you in a conversation about this is because if the categories of actor and actress are in fact supposed to represent best performance by a person who identifies as a woman and best performance by a person who identifies as a man, then there is no room for my identity within that award system binary. Furthermore, if the categories of actor and actress are meant to denote assigned sex, I ask respectfully, why is that necessary? Are you, are you totally confused, my Kapow? Uh, listeners. Yeah, are you totally just confused? The letter got an immediate response from the Academy and it led to what they describes, not they, the Academy, they, Dylan, the non-binary actor 
describes as a thoughtful exchange. Dylan was surprised to learn that Academy rules say that anyone can submit under either category for any reason. The Academy supports anyone's choice to do that. And the Academy is not going to do any sort of check. So they're not going to look under anybody's skirt. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Indeed, Emmy rules for the acting in the categories do not specify gender qualification, saying simply, quote, for a continuing performance in a regular series. Okay. So I found them. This is what they said. I mean, Dylan, the non-binary actor, said they. She, they said, I found them to be 100% supportive. I really couldn't have been happier. That's what she said. I mean, they said, not they. Ah, I hope you're tracking me here. Um, now, they said, not Asia, the Dylan non-binary actor, but they, the Academy. Ah. They said, we are happy with our productive dialogue with Asia because on their very thoughtful letter, <laughs> so they used they used the the pronoun there to refer to her based on their thoughtful letter. <laughs> okay, but you come on. You know okay, you know I'm being crazy here, but you see how nutty this is? And this is like real life. These are like real people in real life pretending to take care of real life business of some sort. Um a spokes hole for the TV Academy told Variety that the uh, Television Academy celebrates inclusiveness as we discussed with Asia. There is no gender requirement for the various performer categories. Asia is free to choose the category they wish to enter. So Dylan, <clears throat> that's the they ultimately decided to enter as supporting actor and let SAG-AFTRA, that's the union, know of the decision as well. Given the choice between actor and actress, actor is a non-gendered word that I use, Dylan says. That's why I chose actor. So Dylan, or they, hopes this sparks a larger conversation about category definitions overall, given that writing and directing aren't gender-specific. And they say... I can only speak to the world in which I wish to live. I think this is really good place to start a larger conversation about the categories themselves and what changes are possible and what may or may not be coming. I'm excited to see what people think and what they want to say once they become aware of this. Okay, so that's it. You can see that it makes no sense whatsoever. It's totally nonsensical. It's totally ridiculous. But they want you to change. Your English language, they want you to change your definition of how you um, see things and what reality says. And they want you to be respectful with their um, asinine choices. And that's why you're off the spiritual grid. You don't you don't participate in this nonsense, but you need to know that it's out there because you can see how close we are to the the total destruction of all flesh. I mean, that's what's going to happen. The wicked are going to be destroyed. The wicked are going to be destroyed. This earth is gone at some point. This is this is what we're leading up to. And I think we're in the last days. I mean, when I say that, you know, I don't know. I might live. I don't know how long I might live. I might die a regular death. It is another generation up. It's still the last days. I don't think it's going to go on too much longer. It can't. I just I just cannot see this global society as a whole globally or flat earth, whatever you want to believe. I don't want to offend anybody out there. Um, It just can't go on very, very long for very long. It's it's nuts. Let's look at. um, Let's you know what? Let's not look at anything. Let's play a clip here. Uh, This is this is kind of um, this is from Ellen DeGeneres show. One of my favorites. So you got some, um, you you got some gay gal interviewing a non-binary gal, and uh, it's quite a hoot. 
but I want you to listen closely to the language. It's uh, unfortunately it's about uh, five minutes long, so uh, I'm going to take five minutes of your time here. And uh, but listen to the language that uh, this actor Dylan, Asia Dylan uses this non-binary stuff, and uh, you can kind of get a feel of of kind of where uh, they are they are going with it better than what I can kind of produce. And then we'll go into some scripture on this. All right, here it is. Thank you, thank you. So let me let me uh, understand this and help everyone understand this. Yeah. Your character on the show is a non-binary uh, identifies non-binary. Yes, and you also identify that way. Yes. Explain what that means. So non-binary is a term used by some people, myself included, who experience their gender identity as falling somewhere outside of the boxes or man or woman. Okay, so you don't. And you, you prefer to be referred to as they or them? Mm-hmm. I use the singular they, them, their pronouns. Okay. Um, because you don't... But is it, is it if someone says she... Because you, you were born a female. I was assigned female at birth. And you yes. are a female, but you don't choose to identify that way. So something I learned um, when doing research for the character of Taylor that I play on Billions, um, Taylor is female and non-binary. And I thought, well, how can those two things coexist, right? Mm-hmm. And so after doing some research, I, I understood, oh, sex and identity are different. Female is a sex, and sex is between our legs, and gender identity is between our ears. Um, so that is how I'm able to identify as non-binary, but also female. And, and how long have you uh, known this about yourself? Well... You know, I felt ambiguous about my gender identity from a very young age. I can remember actually seeing the, um, the film Oliver mm-hmm. and understanding so badly that I wanted to play that part, but that I would never be able to because I was a girl and Oliver was a boy. Mm-hmm. And before I had language to put to those feelings, I remember it, it feeling unjust. Right. So you have a boyfriend now. Right. I have a partner who is a self-identified man, yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but, but I can call him he. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, all right. It's, it's really confusing, and I think people totally. assume just because I'm gay, I understand all of this, and I don't. Totally. I, I mean, no, totally. <laughs> I mean, I, I have identified as queer for a long time, and even to me, like I said when I read the breakdown for Taylor and it said female non-binary, I had to look up those words myself. You know, because I was talking to the producer about how you like to be referred to as they, and I thought, well, it, it sounds like you're using incorrect language if someone's saying, where are they, and they go, they, I guess you could say they are in the kitchen, and said, right. I was going to say they is in the kitchen. Right. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, it's, it just is a hard thing to get used to, because we're used to saying she and he, and that's just, but we don't know about, and I just want to be respectful of and understanding it. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate that. And I think it's important, as you said, to understand that even for people who identify as gay or queer or in the community, it's a learning process for us, too. So, of course, it's going to be a learning process for everyone as well. And I think, for me, you know, if I'm misgendered by someone, if someone says she or he and it's unintentional, I can tell. Mm -hmm. You know, if if it's coming from a place of love, I can tell. It's only when someone... Um, misgenders me on purpose that mm-hmm. it becomes um, hurtful. And, and uh, do your parents uh, support you? I'm very, very lucky to have um, the undying love and support of my family. It's really key. That's great. That's yeah. really important. Good. Yeah. Um, you are a trailblazer. I, I, I mean, I think it's really important because, like I said, I think a lot of people really don't understand this. It's very uh, confusing. And the more that they hear and, and, and see um, people like you and, and hear it, what we're supposed to... I think it's just about letting people uh, be who they are, love who they want to love. Yeah. And if you're not hurting anybody, you're, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely. Yeah. There you have it, folks. As long as you have love and, um, you know, you, you call they a her and you're not being malicious and you do it by accident, she'll forgive you and everything's cool. If not, she's going to, um, you know, rip your rip your heart out or something like that, apparently. Uh, very, very strange. Did you catch uh, even Ellen, who's gay, is confused. She's trying to figure out what the heck this non-binary means and, you know, makes the statement, hey, just because I'm gay, people think I understand this stuff and I don't. <laughs> so even the uh, the gay people are like, wow, you're taking um, nutty stuff beyond uh, even what we did. And it's going to continue. It's just totally crazy. Um, I love the way uh, Asia Dillon, <clears throat> she says 
that sex is between uh, our legs and gender is between our ears. So they just redefine whatever they want to redefine. And then they want you to accept that, like that's true. So the thing is, um, apparently she has a boyfriend who identifies as male. There's a dude. There is a dude who's swapping spit with this thing that's neither male nor female. Now, if they decide to do the nasty and she decides to use her disgusting female parts, um, does that make her uh, a female, the role of a female, if she's lying in bed with her uh, boyfriend who identifies as male? Well, more than likely so, and it's pretty hypocritical. Because I think as a non-binary, she should be with no one or at least another non-binary that wouldn't do any kind of sex act because, well, hey, sex is between your legs and gender is between your ears. But it's just hypocritical, satanic gobbledygook and it's confusion. It's confusion of mind, confusion of heart. Um. Very, very nasty stuff. So we're going to listen to another clip. But before we do that, let's let's hit a couple of scriptures here. Um, the mixing, <clears throat> the mixing. This is this is Paul's opinion. This is this is my opinion. Why the mixing is not good. And she is mixing. She is saying that she is not female, that she was assigned female like it's some kind of passive thing. I mean, nature just assigned her, you know, female, but I don't want to be female. I, I don't want to be anything. Um, so it's a step above the transgenderism. She's, it's beyond just transgender to a, another gender. Um, it's, I'm not a gender at all, but yet I have a boyfriend. Um, very, very odd, but uh, it's a mixing. It's, it's a mixing because God had created well, right there in Genesis. He's created male and female. He created both humankind, male and female. He says, um, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Um, this was the same command given to Noah, you know, after the flood. There are God's laws. There's a reason why he, he uh, made male and female. So to, to mix, to take uh, that gender or sex out, whatever they want to call it, you want to take that out and mix it into something that doesn't exist like a non-binary, is a, is a mixing. And here's my opinion. Genesis 6, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, those are the watchers, the angelic watchers, saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They were um, good. They were a, um, a good thing. And they took them wives, all of which they chose, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, Adam, for that he is also flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. God brought the flood within 120 years. God says, my spirit shall not always strive with Adam because he became mixed. You see, verse two, the sons of God, angelic watchers, their job was to watch mankind and guide mankind. And what they did is they left their first estate. The angels in heaven neither marry or are given in marriage. It doesn't mean they're, they're sexless, but they're angels in heaven. These are angels that are on earth or in the um, earthly atmosphere. They're watchers. The book of Daniel talks about the watchers. Um, they're angelic beings. They're all throughout the scriptures. Uh, they're here on earth. Uh, I believe there's... Um, they're still here, are good, and of course, there's fallen ones. And uh, most of these guys are in the underground, in the underground of Sheol or Tartarus in Greek, being held until the day of judgment. But their uh, their giants, their offspring that they had, were half human, half immortals. That's, those were your mighty men of old, your titans, your Greek myths, your Hercules, things like that. Those this, those bodies, when they died in the flood, they died in the wars, and they died. Uh, when Israel was commanded to uh, kill those nations and things, when they died, their spirits became earthbound. They're not, they can't resurrect. They can't be saved. They're not 
totally human. They're part immortal, part human. So they're earthbound spirits, and that's where you get your um, demons, your demons, or your your uh, wicked spirits, your earth spirits that um, Jesus was casting out and giving the power to his disciples and to his followers in his day to do uh, also. It's a huge, huge thing because no one had power over these demons uh, before that because they are allowed to torment mankind with impunity, impunity. They can do whatever they want until the day of judgment. Those, those things are found in the book of Enoch and Jubilees and stuff. But, um, so that's why we have the problems we have with the demons. And, um, like brother Marco says, God has given every person natural means to block these things. Um, but when you, play with the occult and witchcraft, you break those natural barriers, then that's when you get uh, demonic infestation and possession and total transferring of demons. And uh, that's when it all goes very, very bad. And you can see that in our society all around because they have left the laws of God and live in rebellion. So you have uh, the demonic forces just running amok today. So anyway, uh, but I don't want to digress. I'm sorry. So they, uh, they mate with the daughters of men, the, the, uh, the watchers. And then the Lord says, my spirit's not going to strive with Adam. See, because they became flesh. They, they bore giants. And in 120 years, I'm going to end this. Verse 4 says there were giants or the fallen ones from Nephil, Nephil, a feller, a bully, a tyrant, a giant, the Nephilim. They were uh, Nephilim in the earth in those days. And also after that, after the flood, there was also that. So that's when the sons of man, sons, I'm sorry, when the sons of God, the holy watchers came into the daughters of men and they bare children to them. And those children became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And then that's why God uh, brought the, the flood because they had corrupted the entire generations of man and the entire world except for Noah and his family. That's, in my opinion, that's the mixing. That is the biggie. That's the big, huge, huge mixing. Huge, huge mixing. Uh, so when you have an actor, they, Dylan, they, Asia Dylan, or any transgender or anybody who's mixing, creating something new, you didn't have uh, a violation of the laws of God. And it's demonic. It's just a demonic manifestation of a demonic haunted world. All right. So let's go and look at. Uh, let's see. Let's go look at Deuteronomy 22, 9 through 14. It says, thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Um, least the fruit of thy seed, which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. And it goes on. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Don't mix those two. Uh, don't wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. And you go, well, what kind of laws are those? It has everything to do with that. In, in Paul's opinion, of the watchers mating with the daughters of men and um, corrupting the human DNA. Once you corrupt the human DNA, the Savior couldn't come through the woman because the human DNA would be corrupted and that would thwart, um, it would change the moeds, the laws and the times of God and a Savior could not be born of a woman for redemption if that plan would have worked. Um, and unfortunately it didn't, but only eight souls. So man, that was close folks. That's very close. So let's look at this uh, scripture, the word here, diverse seeds, diverse seeds, diverse seeds, Hebrew, Kilaim, Kilaim. It's in the original sense of a separation, right? Diverse seeds of two kinds. It's a separate, they're separate. Um, it's translated mingled seed four times or mingled or diverse seeds. 
it means two kinds, a mixture. It's a forbidden practice among cattle to crossbreed seed sowing and cloth garments uh, in material. Uh, you're talking crossing two species. Uh, that's why thou shalt not plow with an ox and an axe. Uh, axe, an ass. I told you I can't talk. Let alone say he, they, she, they, them. Woolen, wool, and linen together. These are all symbolic. And I believe it's the diverse seeds. It's the kaliim that God is concerned with. That you become defiled when you mix your seed. Um, in, In the New Testament, when it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, It says that they had uh, gone after strange flesh, foreign flesh, strange flesh, not foreigners. They were, you know, they weren't, they weren't God's people there. They were, you know, they were heathen pagans there in Sodom and Gomorrah. They went after strange flesh. They, uh, you know, they, they, they were mixing seed. It's been going on uh, forever. It's been going on forever. And when you get saved, he changes your spiritual DNA. You change and you become a new creature. Otherwise, uh, we were all we're all bound to uh, to eternal eternal death, so we're we're very fortunate in that manner. And then uh, we need to tell people anybody that'll listen, if they'll still listen today, it's very important. Um, unfortunately, most people don't don't find it important. So uh, Leviticus nineteen nineteen through twenty two says, "Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender." And that's a rabbi. That that basically means you know copulation. Don't you know? Don't let my cattle my cattle have sex with a diverse kind. And uh, once again, that word is kileim, of a sense of separation. Okay, so don't let the cattle have sex with non cattle. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. There's reasons for that. There's symbolic reasons. And then we will lastly look at Daniel 2. Let's see. Let's start at 242. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed, 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 mixed. It's an um, Aramaic word, and it means to mingle or commingle, join together. Iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings, these are the last days. This is the fourth kingdom. This is the very last um, bit before the world um, ends. And in the days of these kingdoms... In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. That's the kingdom, the age of righteousness. That is uh, Christ returning and setting up the kingdom. And that kingdom will forever be. It will never, you know, uh, end. And that kingdom will break uh, in pieces and consume everything that was before it. Okay, world history. That's that's just what's going to happen. So then when Christ comes, his kingdom... It's a a big, huge mountain, not made with human hands, and it breaks everything in pieces. That's it. And uh, then it goes on forever. So um, that's in, you know, Daniel 2, 45. But what I want to point out is the mixture, the mixture. You've heard me talk about this over and over again, mixture, mixture, mixture. So let's take a break, and um, then we'll come back, play one more clip, and we'll wrap it up. The Capel Radio Show Network produces high-quality podcasts that you definitely want to hear. So stick around and get prepared to stimulate your spirit. We advise that depending on the make and model number of any given robot, there may be certain features in their makeup which predispose them to antisocial behavior. It is best to avoid these robots or to limit the time you are in contact with them. If a robot has locked its targeting system on you, remember the SKS rule. Stop, kneel, and surrender. Hello, you're listening to the Kapow Radio Show Network on Blog Talk Radio. The Kapow Radio Show with your hosts, Paul and Linda, is heard every Monday night. And the Patrick Meekin program airs every Wednesday night. 
Then, on Friday, hear the Freedom Friday Hour. All shows air 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern. Please visit kapowradioshow.com for further information. Okay. I am back, and let's look at uh, one more clip from They, Dylan, Asia, her, whatever her name is. And this is the actual Showtime trailer. It's only a couple of minutes long. But listen to the language and listen how they're pumping up the non-binary stuff. Uh, by the way, this is the first actor to proclaim non-binary, so it's a huge thing for them. And so they're really touting uh, they, just like they did, um, what's his face, Brucey Boy, stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's another turning. Here we go. The character I play on Billions is Taylor Mason. Hello, I'm Taylor. Taylor comes to Axe Capital and quickly realizes that there is a lot to gain from watching Bobby Axelrod work. 19,237 19, cents. Taylor is quickly noticed by Axe to be a brilliant mind with a ton of upside potential. My pronouns are they, theirs, and them. Taylor Mason is gender non-binary, which means they don't identify with either gender primarily. Just breathing the air here can be discomforting. When I saw the breakdown for the character, I felt like, oh my gosh, there I am. There I am. There Asia is. Here is language to describe something about me that I've actually never quite been able to put together. I don't know if you can understand me being the way I am. When I first read the script, I wept. Not only because it was me, but because a character has never said that on television before. You see things differently. That's an edge. When I was growing up, if there had been someone like Taylor on TV, it would have really meant something to me. So it feels good to be playing a character that might mean something to someone else who's like me. What makes you think I'm a vegan? You're not? Of course I'm a vegan. So they really, they're really touting this stuff. They love it. Um, you know, this is, this is the greatest stuff since sliced pie, you know, according to them. So anyway, there's uh, just four quick scriptures there. There was uh, Deuteronomy 22.9. Leviticus 19, which basically says the same thing. Uh, I started off with Genesis 6.1, uh, 6, talking about the mixing. And then uh, at the end of days, Daniel 2.42. So it kind of took you through a whole history trip, you know, from the very beginning to the middle to the end, to the end. So, uh, you know, today you find in our apostate Christianity, our churchianity, they're serving another Christ, they're listening to another gospel, and they're mixing, they're mixing it. They're mixing um, ecumenical, you know, nonsense, Catholicism, uh, you know, poor Hank, Hanger Graf, uh got so deceived, he's bowing down and getting, you know, blessed and Christianed or whatever they do at some Greek Orthodox church, uh, because that's like the real religion now or something like that. So uh, they're all, you know, they're going sideways. A lot of people going sideways. Um, you just got to really take heed. Uh, so like I said before, you know, I'm not just, you know, trying to butter you up. I know that, you know, we have a different audience. You guys are uh, more astute spiritually uh, than your average bear. Uh, but we still need to really be careful. So when you look at things like Asia Dillon and the non-binary issue, you can see where it you know, how far we've come from 2008 here in America with the Supreme Court, you know, uh, saying gay marriage is OK, making it legal. You go from there to transgenderism. And, and now we've got this weird non-binary stuff. And, you know, pretty soon we're going to have, you know, legalized pedophilia and marrying robots and, um, you know, animal sex and bestiality. It's the it's the whole thing. It's uh, it's the cup is being filled up of iniquity. And um, the wicked will be destroyed um, without repentance. So that's that's all the good news I have for you. I hope you kind of found that a little bit interesting. I kind of did, just to kind of see what they're saying out there. So uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit. And believe me, Ms. Kapow will be back. We'll have better shows. I apologize for being so sucky, but, um, you know, it's just me kind of spitballing here. All right. Good night, and we'll talk to you later.